Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Locked On ACC. I got it right this time. If you saw Friday's episode, you would see that I was on the other side of the screen and it was not my name, but we got it together, right? We had to get the first week jinx out of the way. So it is me, Candace Cooper, here with my Tuesday host, JJ Jackson. We are rocking and rolling. He is the host of Locked On Blue Devils. He loves to give you that content and respect to Duke, but he also gives great insight when it comes to all other college football stars and studs. So he is going to be here with us. And let me tell you, if you guys have not yet listened to all of my co-hosts, I strongly encourage you to come back every single day. There's no better place to get all of your ACC conference news than Locked On ACC podcast hosted by me and my crew. Follow the Locked On ACC podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. JJ, I hope you had a great weekend. It was. It was a fun weekend. Another weekend of ACC football uh, has concluded and just college football in general. We saw um, a lot of really fun matchups. I thought that top 12 matchup between Ohio State and Oregon was uh, kind of one of the bigger games in the sport. But then uh, look at the ACC, listening to what you and Kenton had to say on the Monday show, it wasn't the best of weeks for ACC programs. But uh, I'm just excited to recap all the games that we get to talk about on today's show. And, And like we said, it was just great to have football back. Listen, I'm also happy with some teams who did what they were supposed to do. We're going to talk about UNC and Dukes of the World. And like at the end of the day, do what we tell you. If, if we're supposed to win these games, you win these games. You beat the Georgia States and the a ts of the world. You don't mix any kind of emotion there. So I'm excited to go over some great schools and some serious upsets that we have on the list. If you guys have not yet heard Monday's show, Kenton covers a certain slate, and then JJ is back here to give us a second half. And so he'll be going over Florida State, Wake Forest, Syracuse, UNC, Duke in Virginia. So let's waste no time here. One of the biggest games of the weekend, maybe for reasons that are not like Ohio State and Oregon. Florida State loses to Jacksonville State in a very close 20 to 17 loss. And a lot of questions during the final drive, final play. It looked as if maybe somebody gave up, maybe somebody cut the wrong angle. There's so many questions. You know, with Coach Norvell, did he call the right play? A lot of things to go over, you know, with that respect. But, you know, just initial thoughts for you when you saw the score, were you just completely like, this can't be real it's absolutely yeah. not not the thing no for sure just uh, surprise like everyone yeah. else I'm, I'm, i've mentioned this before uh but uh having lived in the state of alabama for a number of years in my life mm-hmm. i'm very familiar with the jackson state football program uh, a few years back they had a pretty big scare uh, against the auburn tigers in 2015 but auburn was able to hold on and and win that football game even though it did go to overtime and earlier this year i actually was watching that week one game that Jacksonville State played, again, being in the state of Alabama, you watch JSU play UAB, and UAB won and shot him. I mean, it was just all Blazers all the time, and Jacksonville State had absolutely nothing. So the fact that they were able to come back and beat Florida State in the fashion that they did, and now Florida State, a team that I thought was going to be much better in another year under Mike Norvell, is now 0-2. That's disastrous. This is the worst-case scenario for the Seminoles, and to lose like that on the last play of the game, a walk-off touchdown in college football, that's rare. That's rare that you see that in regulation, Uh, but that was the case on Saturday, and so credit to the Gamecocks. That is a win that they will remember for the rest of their lives. Every player on that field will remember that for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and I think that Coach Norvell, like, there's you take the blame, but at the end of the day, there's so many different things to unpack here. Like, we go back to the start of the season, you try and pour into your guys, you finish every play, you do whatever you can for the team, all that good stuff. But when they get to action time, do you play down to competition? I think that's what Florida State did here. Losing two at home, you started out so well. We were all high on you guys after Notre Dame. I think it speaks to now when we review Notre Dame almost losing their game this weekend. It's kind of a poor reflection of the conference as we're trying to hype up you know, getting multiple people in college football playoff conversation. It's not doing a great service for Clemson right now. Right. And we're trying to sell them on schedule. So I'm just a little nervous as to how that's all going to play out. Like Clemson, I think, will have a shot, but it doesn't help that you got smacked by Georgia and then you're trying to, like, play the rest of your schedule and there's not a whole lot of strength there. And so Florida State fought so much in week one, right? I mean, you're down by 18 in the fourth quarter to Notre Dame. Come all the way back. We talked about what a great story it was for Mackenzie Milton to bring them back, have a chance to win, 
and uh, ultimately can't finish, and Notre Dame walks away with a three-point victory. But even in that, you felt like you could take a lot away from a game like that and go into your next school. This is a, a buy game, right? Like Florida State paid Jacksonville State money to come play this football game to help their program, and Jacksonville State said, we're going to take the bag and the W okay. and went out the door uh, back to Alabama and just a tough, tough result for Florida State. They went with Mackenzie Milton the whole time, 18 of 31 for 133 yards, an average of four yards per completion. That's awful. There is no passing game there whatsoever this past Saturday. And, uh, I mean, Florida State should be embarrassed. That was terrible. Yeah, yeah. and I think, like, I mean, are you tired? What is it, guys? Like, yeah. it's week two. <laughs> Right. Where's the juju? Like, sure. I get this For maybe sure. in week 11, but like week two, are we really already puttering out and you start to right. talk to a strength coach? What you, you did have a short on? week. You did have a short week. I'll I'm give saying. you that. You played on the Sunday as opposed to Saturday right. against Notre Dame. But one less day against Jacksonville State? Come on. You're better than that. that you're pathetic. better. You're absolutely better than that. Another team we get to talk about here, we are going through Wake Forest, who took down Norfolk State. Can we have one more thing before we we run over? Of course. Also, what the internet's talking about, and, I mean, I've got to hear your thoughts on this. There was an engagement that took place after the game. Yeah. You know, okay. (laughs) I'm glad you mentioned this, because I was going to just let it go, let that man go be great. But here is my thought, and I read somebody's comment saying, I'm sure they thought they were going to trample on Jacksonville State, right? right? Like we all did. Exactly. He probably invited her family, like everyone was flying in for the game. Candace, I had the exact same thoughts. I was like, (laughs) buddy, I probably know what you're going through. You just got to do it. The whole family is there. You have to do it. Uh, I've never experienced that in my life yet. One day that's going to happen and that's going to be awesome where you get so much family, friends, everybody kind of in on the engagement and you can't just be like, yeah, we're not going to do this this time, you know? (laughs) Not feeling it. But I think (laughs) that speaks more to him as a man. Like football isn't his everything. And I appreciate that because a lot of guys, you know, some who are really in the thick and the throes of their sport, they're like, oh, everything's based on my mood. So if I'm not in the mood, I'm not going to propose. Or like, I'm like, nah, it can't be your everything. So I appreciated him for seeing it through. Right. No Despite doubt the fact that. that he, you know, lost, lost a game that he knew he should have won, but the moment is that moment is way bigger than football. He'll remember that beyond. So. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna remember if if you win the game, you're gonna remember that moment for the rest of your life, exactly. right? Exactly. Be your wife that you're gonna, but just the fact that it comes after you lost a football in the fashion that they did because there's so much celebration. You know, it's one thing, like if you just get the doors blown off and Jacksonville state's very quick to exit the field, but they weren't Candace cause they won on a walk off touchdown. And well, okay, so but JJ, chaos. I'm sitting here. You saw them celebrating in the background. And my thing is like, I wonder how the proposal went like, Hey babe, I know we just lost a big one, you know, but you're still my everything. I still want to make this work. Like I I can only imagine how he tried to like distract her, but at the end of the day, I'm sure she was so engulfed in him being on one knee, hot and sweaty. Like, that's why I always said, I tell anybody this who do not want a public proposal because there's too many factors and variables that can go right or wrong. And so now now the internet's talking, like we're talking about it. Okay, like a whole bunch of strangers are deciding who my husband is. I'm gonna have to fight you on Twitter. Like, let's just not. Let's just. Yeah, if this was at the crib (laughs) after the game, you and I would not talk about this for one split second. But no, the fact that the internet got hold of it, we had to bring it up. So I know, man. How about that? Yeah, poor guy here. But there are guys down in Winston Salem who are really thrilled. They are they are moving the chains here. They I'm talking about Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons who took down Norfolk State. They are now two and zero, two and zero at home, and they are rolling. Sam Hartman was seventeen for twenty five, two hundred forty four yards with one touchdown. Also saw nine carries and sixty yards from Christian Beal Smith and Jaquari Roberson, who's having a great start to his year. I'm feeling good about Wake Forest. I think they haven't had a true challenge yet but at the same time you win games that you're supposed to win and honestly right now in the ACC we have to like just be excited and happy for that what are your thoughts here no absolutely I mean Norfolk State again a buy game you're paying the money to come to your house you got to find a way to win Wake Forest was favored by 43 points in Vegas in this game Mm -hmm. and um, obviously did not cover that spread but still walked away with an impressive victory I think Sam Hartman is one of the stories here Uh, you mentioned his stat line there and he's just 
He's a quarterback that we don't bring up as often as some of his peers and counterparts in the ACC, but he's an experienced guy. And if he keeps winning football games like this, protecting the football, not turning it over, which he's done a good job of doing so far uh, this season, then uh, I think we're going to have uh, a lot more conversations about Sam Hartman in the weeks to come. 100% agree. Now, a team that we can talk about quickly here because there's not much. <laughs> Rutgers faced Syracuse in a 17-7 win. Syracuse is the first loss of the season. They are now 0-1 at home. Tommy DeVito tried his best, 15 for 26, 149 yards. Did have an interception on the game. But to me, you know, Syracuse didn't look horrible, right? It was bad, but they had, they had an opportunity to be in the game. And we, had, we can't have mm, – let me try that again – we haven't always been able to say that about Syracuse. So maybe that's my one like silver lining. Yeah, I mean, look, Candace, we, we talk about the previous two opponents for ACC schools, Jacksonville State and Norfolk State. So at least it's not a state school that's not even <laughs> an actual state um, at the FCS level that you're bringing yeah. in to uh, play. you. This is a, a Power 5 versus Power 5 matchup. Rutgers is definitely on the rise. Uh, with Greg Shiano, they're in a much better place. But looking at that score, 17-7, to right? We saw another similar game like this this past weekend that's outside of the SEC footprint. But Power 5, Power 5, Texas A&M, Colorado, the mm-hmm. final score of that game was 10-7. to I mean, these are boring football <laughs> scores. And Syracuse just had nothing to offer. Uh, quarterback yeah. less than 50% completion percentage. Uh, or just over 50% completion percentage uh, in DeVito and under 150 yards. I mean, that's just not great. So you're a shootout guy. You prefer a Give me points. Give me points. I I know that there are great (laughs) defensive guys out there, and I do say that knowing how much I loved the Clemson and Georgia game this past weekend, but probably just because it surprised me so much Mm -hmm. because I was expecting there to be points. But that just shows how great these defenses are. I think in a game like Rutgers and Syracuse, I'm not blown away by Rutgers' defense. I'm blown away at how inept Syracuse has been on offense. Yeah, well, see, I don't know what it is about me. I'm always different from the norm, but I love a good defensive game. Like, I think, you know, they say defense defense wins championships, sure, but I love when guys just, you can't get anything going. Like, you have great open field tackles. Like, you're able to just swallow up the quarterback. I live for stuff like that. Like, yeah, eat them up, eat them up, let's go. Like, if you can't make open field tackle, why are you playing football? Like, that's me all day. I don't know, just different. This game was (laughs) 0-0 at halftime, you know, like. And that's just like, all right, somebody be somebody. (laughs) Something. Like I guess if it's if it's lopsided where somebody defensively is just going to town, but the other team is just having a high fly shootout, fine. But you know when it's both teams just sucking it up, then you're kind of like, all right, somebody right. figure it out. And this way. is a or game. Where you, this yeah. is a game where you want to watch the the highlights. Not a Syracuse guy, obviously. Nothing yeah. about this game was like appointment television where I need to watch this. But you go back and you look at the highlights in the third quarter. Dino Babers had an unsportsmanlike foul called against yeah. him 15 yard penalty that set up Rutgers first touchdown of yeah. the game. Right. And I'm just like, that's not Dino's how not you want helping himself. Right. Right. That's not <laughs> how you want your coach to be written about after the fact is a uh, known sportsman like penalty. No doubt. Well, all right, college football fanatics, have you heard about Prize Packs? Prize Packs is a daily fantasy made easy. I love this, and I know you will too. Prize Pack offers every sport you can think of, offers more than college football props than anyone, more college football props than anyone in the world, and offers all the star players of Power Five, as well as mid major players you might not have ever heard of. All of your users that deposit and use your promo code, you receive a 100% instant deposit up to a hundred dollars you pick two to five players and an over under on their projections and you can win up to 10 times on any entry and it's just you versus the projected numbers prize picks allow mixed sports entries right so you can use the award-winning app on both the app store and google play it's safe and offers fast withdrawals we know we like to get our money quickly okay don't hesitate check out prizepicks.com or go to your app store and download the app today prize picks is a daily fantasy made easy when you're done with that and you're traveling through the rest of the college football tour, we've got a lot of games left here. We want to make sure that if you're on the road, your car is safe. So with the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's almost impossible for your local chain auto parts store to have all the parts you need. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. 
Well, I choose to spend up to 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution for your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car, truck, right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Please visit rockauto.com. Speaking here with J.J. Jackson from Locked On Blue Devils, he hosts his show every single day talking about Duke athletics, a lot of good content there. Also is an Auburn guy, so in case you need a little SEC buzz, he can plug that at the end, and you can follow him on Twitter at the bar screen below. Listen, we got a lot to go over here this Coastal because we're both two Coastal teams that we love to Love to hate at times, but love to love most times. UNC and Duke had some great games this weekend. Let's start with the good one, though. Like, I think UNC was fine, but I want to talk about Duke. Because going coming after a Duke-Charlotte game, which everyone was like, all right, Coach Cut, <laughs> it's been real, my guy. Like, you know, it's time, it's the beginning of the end. Like, let's wrap it up, get ready for retirement. And then he comes out, plays a and and it starts to get a little fuzzy at the beginning. Right? We're like, okay, maybe this really is the end. But then he comes out and says, you know what? My team can deliver. And that's exactly what they did. Mateo Durant being the guy that he is, Gunnar Holmberg having a great start to his, or better start to me in his year 20 for 27 with 270 yards. I would love to hear your thoughts and takeaways and what you kind of discussed on your show. Yes, today. Right? Yeah, no Monday. doubt. I mean, look, it's, uh, it's, a Duke victory, which they did not pick up after the first week. So that in itself is a step forward from what this program was. But losing to North Carolina A&T after the first quarter, 7-0, only leading at halftime by a score of 21-14, to right? It wasn't great in that first half for Duke football, but fortunately they did enough in that second half to create the separation that they needed. Look, you look at this game for Duke, and first off I want to say this, ESPN – and the ACC clearly think Duke must be the quality of a high school football team, Candace, because we have opened up with back-to-back Friday night games, right? Yeah. So we're, we're just the Friday night lights. Uh, but maybe you in want to for the Blue Devils. Like, I, I was feeling it. I was feeling the Duke, you know, the dirt True. night and all of that love. Like, it's all about you guys. In case you lose, that's we fair. just keep it. We could just That's pass fair. it along. Exactly. <laughs> like people forget about it the next day when they're watching all the football. But no, I thought I thought Gunner was great. I thought that he uh, had another good game, took care of the football, which is the biggest thing. I mean, we talked all year long last year about the Stuke football team turning the football over 39 times. And a lot of that was the interceptions and fumbles that Chase Bryce had at quarterback. And Duke did not turn the football over at all on Saturday. That's the first time in quite a while that they've had a game where they were that clean on offense. And then what can we say about Mateo Durant? I mean, the rushing yards weren't there, but my guy got into the end zone three more times on Saturday. He's now up to six rushing touchdowns on the season. Gunner had two running touchdowns himself. Uh, I think there's a lot to like from this Duke offense uh, after a performance like that versus A&T. And I also am just hopeful that Mateo can withstand this. Like, this is just a lot on him. Yeah. It's a lot to carry the team, right? I think he's going to have – I'm going to hope that the, the defense continues to improve so they're able to at least instead keep the offense off the field for a little bit or figure it right. out in ways that, you know, give Mateo a bit of a break. But I will say to point to Chase Bryce, we talked about on Monday's show, my guy almost beat Miami. Like, yeah. can you, like <laughs> it's the biggest F you to do because I'm like, so where was this right. <laughs> when you were a Blue Devil? But no, either way, I'm happy for the kid found his home in Appalachian State. But I do, and, you know, getting glad that Duke got that win. Yeah, we don't understand why uh, Chase decided <laughs> to play his best football once he left Durham. But more power to him. Happy with Gunnar Holmberg. Didn't turn the football over, which is great. And uh, Mateo Durant's the best. So 100% all, all around, all around good performance for Duke. There you go. And then we've got North Carolina who walked on Georgia State, beating them 59-17. to They are now 1-1 one one on the season, 1-0 and oh at home. Sam Howell finding his rhythm, three touchdowns like he never left, <laughs> right? Two of them himself. He was haul and tail. He thought somebody was going to catch him, but clearly he has some wheels that we didn't know about. But for you, you know, the, again, a game we knew they should have won. But at what point do you say, Carolina, all right, what's next? Like, like what can be better or – Is this going to be something that you can maintain when you have teams like Virginia and Pittsburgh, you know, trying to come in and take the top of the coastal? Yeah, I think you just want to see it against ACC teams now for North Carolina. Obviously, it didn't go well in the first week 
versus Virginia Tech, and you've got a Georgia State team out of the Sun Belt that's uh, obviously not in Power 5 college football. And, again, that's a game that uh, UNC should have won, and they did. They looked good. They took care of business. They did what they should, and Sam threw for the three touchdowns that you're talking about. He ran for two more, so he accounted for, you know, basically 35 points himself with those five touchdowns. Uh, that he was able to put on the board, and that's why he had all the Heisman buzz going into the season was performances like that. Back to himself, not throwing the interceptions like he did in that uh, first week versus Virginia Tech, way more in control. And so now if you're Carolina, how can you turn the page and move into ACC play by being that successful of an offense? And with Sam being as good as he is, you have to wonder about the running game. And I know – Chapel Hill fans and UNC fans are super excited about Ty Chandler coming over from, from Tennessee, but he hasn't done a whole lot yet. You know, like you look at his numbers, only four yards per carry and 15 attempts did find the end zone once, but uh, I think the running game is something that North Carolina needs to try to figure out. And look, they're having to replace two great guys in Michael Carter and Javante Williams. That was going to be tough as it is, uh, but you're absolutely saying that there is a drop off in that running back room. Listen, between Florida State's four yards with McKenzie Milton and Ty Chandler's four (laughs) yards, we do not mess with four yards on this show. (laughs) (laughs) We do not mess with four yards on this show. But, no, I 100% agree. It's a lot of pressure. He's hurt it all season. But also we saw the Tennessee showing when they played against Pitt. And, you know, can we be that impressed? You know, I don't know. I'm still trying to just trying to have positives for Carolina, but at the end of the day, I can't be too impressed when I know this is what you're supposed to do. You're now at the place where these games don't impress me. I know you can do this. Can you do this against a Virginia Tech and a Virginia of the world? But ending up, you know, the conversation about our coastal teams and recapping, we'd be remiss if we did not talk about the Cavaliers, who had a great showing as well, beating Illinois. 42-14, to and Illinois clearly isn't the greatest team in the world. But Brendan Armstrong, have a day, sir. 405 yards, five touchdowns. I'm just like, okay, as much as we've been talking about Sam Howell, other quarterbacks around this league, or around this conference, rather, are saying, ah, wait a minute, you know, pay attention over here. (laughs) If I can have a moment of your time. Armstrong was great for the Cavaliers. I mean, as you said, over over 400 yards and five touchdown passes, outstanding against a team like uh, Illinois. Uh, now coached by Brett Bielema, who's a tough nose to hard coach, um, great defenses typically from where he's been in Wisconsin and uh, then in the SEC with Arkansas. They're going to play you tough. And um, this is one of those Power 5 and Power 5 games that I was talking about a little bit earlier, but this one's a little bit more appealing because we had more offense. I mean, 42 uh, to 14, and um, really it was just all Virginia once we got into that second half. Uh, But an outstanding performance from Armstrong, and you're right, along with uh, Sam Hartman, who I mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, I think we got to give a couple of other guys outside of just Sam Howe some love at the quarterback position in the ACC. 100% agree. And there's going to be so much more to bet on through the rest of this college football season. If you have not yet, we always encourage you to go to Bet Online. It's your number one spot, spot for all pro and college football action. With the new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be your source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive a 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100 from basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all sports. It's your online sportsbook experts. Please use promo code Locked On. So we're wrapping up the show here with JJ Jackson from Locked On Blue Devils, and we have just your initial thoughts. Best game of the weekend? Did you have one from the ACC that you were, you know, impressed with, or in just in general overall watching week two of college football? And this, you know, just some other updated news that we'll get into here in a bit. Yeah, no, I think uh, looking at the ACC games from this past weekend, it's one that we've already talked about. But again, I think if you're looking for one big story, I think it's got to be what Jacksonville State did at the end there with Florida State, a program that has traditionally been known as uh, the best of the best in terms of ACC football. And look, you're, you're obviously trying to find that level of success that you had when Jimbo Fisher was the head coach, but they weren't losing games like this um, when Jimbo really had it rolling at Florida State, and uh, that was just crazy to see because I love when the best teams in the ACC are at their best and competing uh, across the country for spots in the likes of the college football playoff or New Year's Six Bowl games, whatever it may be, and Florida State just wasn't there. So 
Uh, I think that's honestly got to be one of the bigger takeaways you can have in terms of an exciting game, unexpected finish, and uh, just, oh, my gosh, did that really happen? And, yes, it did. I feel mad at myself for getting so hyped on Florida State. I built them up, and maybe I need us to stop building up teams because I yeah. built up NC State. I was like, well, hell, NC State might be the best team in the Atlantic. Let's go for it. And now <laughs> sit, here I am sitting wanting to cry. So, no, I'm just kidding, though. I think overall it's a great week, too. I think Pitt and Tennessee was my favorite game just because Good choice. You know, it's never expected for us to beat SEC teams, but it's always a nice touch, right? It's always a good chef's kiss. And despite Tennessee being you know, a mediocre SEC team, I still think it's quality play. You say you know, SEC is a little more superior than others. Well, Pittsburgh took it to town. So I'm happy with Kenny Pickett. I think that they – if there was ever a time to have a crazy coastal, here we are. And Pitt's trying to tell y'all, yeah, you thought it was Carolina. You thought it was Miami. But here we are trying to fire our way to the top as well. Brendan Armstrong saying the same thing. So it's going to be a mess per usual, but what's new, right? So there is <laughs> that. In a little Atlantic Division news, we did want to update you guys on Boston College's Phil Dracovic. He is out for the season after having a, a wrist surgery. He had a wrist injury during the UMass game. Saw him tweet, thanks to Boston College's Locked on Boston College host, AJ Black, for giving us that BC Bulletin news update. Showed a picture of... Phil on his Instagram surgery, wrist in hand, kind of knew what time it was. And then, yeah, it's all bad news from there. And it hurts me because I have been so high on Boston College and Jeff Halfley and so unfortunate news. But at the same time, I still feel like, you know, there's there's things there. There's pieces there. Zay Flowers also got hurt. I think he'll be able to return. But it does change the landscape for the Atlantic a little bit. Yeah, you know, we're it's, it's one of those things where we're just so excited for football to be back. And then – just one or two weeks into the year, you realize like, man, this is a uh, a pretty aggressive sport that yeah. we enjoy watching and things like this are going to happen. So when Djokovic got hurt in the first half uh, for Boston College, you just hoped it, it wasn't the worst. The worst case scenario being that he's done for the year. Unfortunately, it was. I know that Dennis Grossell, Grossell I think I'm saying that properly, came in and uh, took over at that quarterback spot for Boston College. So now you've just got to turn the page. Look, if you're BC, you're still 2-0 and on the year. You're still off to a good start. And uh, you just want to make sure with your new quarterback in place now that you can revamp the offense and turn the page and get ready to continue to compete in the ACC. I know that I was hard on Coach Halfley in our ACC rankings, which uh, AJ was not that big of a fan of. Um, <laughs> basically, AJ and the entire the entire Boston College uh, nation, good. but uh, I talked about. Uh, I mean, I gave good reasoning. It's just the inexperience. He hadn't been a head coach that long, and now he's getting a chance to to prove to me that uh, yeah, you can make big time adjustments like this on the fly. And I'm excited to see how the rest of the year turns out for Boston College. Fair enough. We also have NC State Peyton Wilson and Cyrus Fagan, who are both out for the season due to injury. Peyton Wilson had a shoulder surgery. He said he played with a dislocated shoulder in the last two games of last year, but she like get. Get 12 opportunities. I'm trying to get in there and now getting injured again, not coming back in that Mississippi State game. We all fear for the worst, but that is confirmed that those two are out. Cyrus Fagan is a transfer, so it's tough loss for NC State as well. So as much as I want to be like, no, Clemson's not going to do it, I don't feel confident that any other team right now can even come close. Yeah, I think Clemson's going to figure it out. I think it's a, a story that we've seen before. <laughs> Tale as old as time. <laughs> yeah. Well, JJ, I thank you for coming on the show. Always, it's always you know a fun time to just get to be able to talk shop with you. Can you please remind folks of where they can find you and follow your work? Absolutely, locked on Blue Devils every single day throughout the week uh, at lo underscore Blue Devils on Twitter or wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore redundant for the folks that are watching us with this podcast. It's right underneath my name. But if you're listening to us, that's the Twitter handle. Give me some love. Like you said, do uh, a, the Duke Blue Devil show here at Locked On and uh, live out of the Auburn area. So no SEC football, too. So give me a follow. I love talking college football with people. No doubt. Well, we'll have a Wednesday show tomorrow with AJ Black talking power rankings. We know they have shifted for the ACC here, and we will make sure that we guys get you geared up for Thursday with Tyler and then Freestyle Friday with Jersey Drake. For Candace Cooper and JJ Jackson, we hope you guys were a great rest of your day, and until next time. Yeah. Big baller brand.